Air Venture Oshkosh and we're always looking around for something that we need to know more about. We know that Legal Eagle, and there's a lot of interest in this particular airplane because it's very low cost to create one. But what we don't know enough about is how to build it and what it flies like. And then we've got this engine up here that we want to hear more about. So I'm Dan Johnson talking with uh, Les uh, Holman, and you're going to tell me a little bit more about, let's start with the engine because it's just a cool artifact on the front of this airplane. Okay. It's a Werner Motors uh, model V3. Uh, or 3V, they call it their Scarlet 3V. Uh, it's made in the Czech Republic and they've been making engines since back in the 80s. Uh, this particular engine is 42 horsepower at 2500 RPM. Uh, it uh, has about one and a half times the torque of the half VW that was on here and without the starter motor on it, they come with a starter motor, but without the starter motor, it's four pounds lighter than the half VW firewall forward. Is that right? Now, uh, the half VW has been a common engine selection for the Legal Eagle, partly because they're trying to keep the price down, and those engines are available and so forth. Why? Uh, and you said quite a bit more torque, and torque is good for airplanes. But is that the only reason why you went to this engine? Well, the reason I went with this engine is because it was something different and it attracted my attention and a friend of mine needed some help in procuring one actually 10 of them so i ended up get, by helping him i ended up with a real good deal on this engine so i was able to afford it and get it on here now the downside of these engines they are kind of pricey you can get two half vws for what one of these is ah, that right but you don't get the sound you don't get the torque you don't get the looks and you can't spin this this prop is nearly as big as I am. Yeah, the, the prop is huge. When, when you first fly this and you get behind it, your first flight, the thing that just blows you away is that monster rotating prop out there. <laughs> you get the sun behind it just right and it's like, all you see is prop. <laughs> you made a comparison to a P-51 with that big giant prop in the front of it. It looks like the prop is bigger than the whole airplane and it's kind of a cool look to it. That's absolutely right. You've been able right. to mimic that here, yeah, is that right? Yeah, and it's, it's priceless. Uh, as far as flying, this rotates the opposite direction of the half VW. Ah, okay. And so I had to do a little bit of rigging changes to get that all dialed in. And... Uh, the engine itself has performed flawlessly. The factory has been uh, very easy to work with Same and thing. very responsive. Uh, there are three separate ignition systems, one for each cylinder. So if you happen to lose oh, one, really? uh, you have two more that are operational. And uh, with one of the ignition systems down, we're getting about 1800 RPM. You're not going to climb over anything, but it's going to get you to somewhere safe to land. Yeah, get you to a safe landing spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and, a, that's uh, a cool innovation. Carbon fiber on the intake tubes. Is that right? It's a dry sump system, so the oil all goes down into the oil tank. And uh, before you start it, like any radial engine, you got to make sure you don't have any fuel or oil in the intake tubes. You rotate the engine multiple times to make sure there's no oil hiding down between a piston and a head to blow a head off. And uh, when you get that done, you basically crank it up and go. The engine is supplied from the manufacturer, had a Walburl uh, 37 carburetor on it with electric fuel pump. All that comes with the engine. And uh, I wanted to say the weight of the fuel pump and uh, I couldn't get the Walburl to dial in like I wanted it to. So I changed it out to a Makuni uh, oh, okay. VM26 and uh, got it all dialed in at uh, about 2050 rpm the engine is extremely quiet i'm getting the same speeds that i was cruising in my half vw at about 2800 rpm so i'm about 800 wow. rpm less quite a bit less noise and, and fuel consumption i'm and guessing instead of using 2.4 gallons an hour i'm using two wow and uh, that torque that this engine puts out every time you advance the throttle it's just priceless and uh, the uh, the engine it's smooth i won't say it's smoother than the half VW, but they're, they're, they're as smooth as you'd want any airplane engine to be. Excellent. Okay. So now let's go from the engine back and tell me a little bit about, uh, I don't need to know every detail, but give me some of the highlights of building the aircraft. Well, this airplane was built in uh, 2012 and uh, I actually built it from the time the day I started until the day it flew was seven months. 
Is that right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, what happens, I was didn't have a lot going on then, so I spent a lot of time working on it. And I had actually already built one prior, so I ah, it wasn't okay. learning from scratch. Uh, the fuselage is straightforward welded tube. There's no high stress point, so if you're a first time builder, there's nothing to really be concerned about. If you can get a basic, decent weld going, you're good to weld any part of it. And uh, the woodworking, uh, if you look at the plans, is kind of overwhelming, but if you take it one step at a time, build one piece at a time, and understand how that piece fits to the next, works out quite simple. Uh, it's covered with uh, Dacron uh, fiber. It, this is what they call peel ply, it's a 1.8 ounce and uh, it's, it's not certified. Uh, you put, I use Polytac to put the fi fabric on, and then it's covered with latex house paint. Huh, really? And uh, All part of keeping that cost down. Yeah, well the whole entire paint job, paint, Polytac, fabric, everything, brushes, rollers, was $175. <laughs> Is that right? Goodness. Yeah. I mean, you could buy a gallon of paint that costs almost that much. Yeah. Or more, actually. Uh, yeah, and I, I bought the, uh, the paint at one of the big box stores, went down to her paint department, said, I want this color, I want the best UV protection you got, the best house paint. And they mixed it up, gave it to me, and that's what's on it. And off you went into the wild blue yonder. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's talk now. Let's shift gears a little bit now, because one thing I don't know is how this airplane flies. Talk to me about how it flies. Russ. This airplane, the best description I've heard or read is it flies like a slow cub. Uh, I've flown Cetabria, Decathlons, Aronkas, uh, Cessna 150s, Starduster 2s. This airplane, if you've flown any airplane, you can fly this. Is that right? The, the, the way it responds, the way it turns, the way it handles in the air is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you're flying this airplane and you do a stall, it leaves you with like, did that really happen? I got to do that again. See if it happened. And uh, it's just, it's so much fun to do anything with because it's so gentle. And it's, uh, you can't really do any aerobatics. There's not a lot of weight in it. So if you want to do a wing over, you can dive and build up <laughs> speed. And when you pull it up, it says, okay, I'm through and just stops. <laughs> even with the big engine on it. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, when you get turned over so far to do a steep turn, it says, that's enough. I ain't going no more. Is that right? And if you're in a steep turn and you do a stall, about the time it gets ready to stall, it just flattens out and says, okay, I'm a normal stall. That's the end of that. And uh, if you hold it up during a stall with the ailerons or with the rudder, it don't care. It's just sitting there, kind of mushing down towards the ground. And, and uh, just beautiful airplane to fall, to, to fly. The thing about any ultralight or lightweight airplane is when you're coming in to land, you want to fly it to the ground until you really understand it because with this giant piece of wood out here and you pull the throttle back to idle, it's wanting to go oh, 10 or 12 mile an hour. And when your stall speeds up around 27, uh, if you're doing, coming in three foot above the ground and say, wow, this is a nice landing, I'll pull the power and just let it float, it don't float, it, it comes the, straight the down. The floating is over, huh? Yeah. But other than that, it is beautiful. Uh, the, Sounds like an ideal airplane for a, a beginning pilot, then. For a beginning pilot or someone that's wanting to just fly. Uh, to me, this would be the absolute perfect airplane if you had a little place to fly out of, a crop duster strip, a farm, a backyard, and you just wanted to go fly. You don't get anywhere in a hurry. If you're going 60 miles in this thing, it's a long cross-country flight. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time. My record in this, going cross-country on the GPS, is 86 mile an hour. <laughs> On the low side is 22. Is that right? And that's that's ground speed at cruise power. And uh, normally, no wind condition, you're going to cruise at about 48 to 50 mile an hour. And uh, uh, it stalls. Um, actually, with the Werner on it, I've found that I can pull it up at about 1,700 RPM. And you just kind of work it up into a stall and just keep it coming up. And I've had as low as 12 mile an hour on my airspeed Is indicator. Is that right? Wow, those yeah. are really low numbers. Yeah, but it's just, it, you can't beat it. If, if you want to build time, if you just want to have fun flying, if you've flown in the past and it's like, I'd get, like to get back into flying, you can't beat it. So it's a good new air, a new pilot's airplane and also a good old pilot's airplane. Absolutely. When you're kind of going, all I want to do is go out and have a little joy in the sky now. Yeah, because the, the, the cost of building these, um, if you are a good scrounger, I know a guy that's flown one in the last few years that had $3,000 in the total airplane. From, Is that right? Yeah. 
the, the all the wood come from the ZAA chapter people that had wood projects and they weren't going to finish their projects or they'd finished and they had stuff left over, some broken spars, stuff he cut up. Uh, I think the only thing that had really any cost to it was a fuselage. Found an engine and a Volkswagen engine and went through it and 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 overhauled it and done all the work himself. Well, three thousand dollars for your your screw your great I'll call him a great scrounger because that's doing quite a job to get any airplane in the air for three thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, good job, whomever that was. Well done. But let's say you're not quite that ambitious or don't have those skills or that much patience and you want to get. I want to get it done quick so I can go have that fun you just described. Are there component parts available, Les? There are component parts available. John Bolding down in Texas builds all of the welded parts and pieces. Everything's uh, welded. So you, and don't, you, can you might not have to weld them. That's correct. Okay, continue on. Now, the wood parts and pieces, I don't know of anybody building those, but those are easy to do, and uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, this particular airplane, uh, again, this was a few years ago, but I went to Aircraft Spruce, ordered everything, and went and picked it up at one time. Is that right? The okay. total wood, everything wood, was a little over $800. The total metal, everything metal, was about $1,100. Is that right? And your landing gear is roughly about $480. That's the Black Max wheels, tires, and brakes. Uh, your engine, of course, like any airplane, is a major purchase. If you get to Scott Kassler and get one of his 37 horse, which would be an ideal engine for this, uh, as I recall, those are less than $4,000. And a, a prop, if you go to Frank Johnson and get a prop similar to what I've got for the half VW, you're looking at less than $500. I think you know, I can't do the math quick enough in my head, but those numbers you just mentioned, there's uh, somewhere around six or seven thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's that was it. that was for all the bits and parts, buying the components. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of questions I've asked you here. Um, I want to give people a place they can go to ask even more questions of you, and let's give them the factory too. Let's start with your web address. Okay, my web address, it's a blog, is LegalEagleFlyingAdventures.com. Okay. And uh, if you want to know more about the airplane, the, the Volkswagen engines, BetterHalfVW.com. Okay, and that's the airplane company, not the engine company. Uh, better Half VW. Leonard started out with the half Volkswagen, and then he got the Legal Eagle come next. So if you go to the better half VW, you will find information on how to build a very inexpensive engine for it, as well as the Legal Eagle, the Legal Eagle Ultralight, the XL, which is right here, and then their, their Double Eagle, which is a two-place side-by-side. Cool. So you can find all that at the better half. Uh, BetterHalfVW.com. BetterHalfVW.com. Okay, yeah. very good. I have written about this as I mentioned, and it's always gone over very well. I assume this will happen again. You can find all that and lots of affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for talking to Les and myself here at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh. Okay, thank you.